Catholic family, St. Martin de Porres. Welcome to the semifinal of the 100 meter hurdles. Don't forget, whoever finishes first and second will run in the final. I'm gonna beat you. You're gonna need another pair of legs for that. Good one. Hmm. On your marks, get set, go! I won! How'd you like that? Oh, my leg! Ugh. So how does it feel to lose, huh? Huh? Guys, I've broken my leg! I can't move! It really hurts! I'm gonna die! Come on! You probably just twisted your ankle. What do you know? Are you a doctor? All right, I'll call the school nurse. I think I'm going to faint. Hey, don't even think about it. Hang in there, champ. I... I can't stand the pain. Ugh. Hey, Alex, wake up. What... what happened to me? You fainted. Me? What... where am I? Is this the hospital? Do you really not remember? You're scaring me. How many fingers do you see? What? Come on, I gotta check your brain to see if it's still working. I don't remember anything. It's all a blur. How old are you? I can see a little better. Who's your mom and dad? Come on, speak to me. My mom and dad? Who do you think? Okay, it's starting to come back. What's your name? Who am I? You? You wanna know who you are? You're a crazy Martian who's trying to abduct me in his flying saucer. What's that? Will you please stop asking silly questions? Hey, I just wanted to check that you were okay. Ow, my leg hurts. Well, I see you've woken up. You fell over and banged your head and you fell unconscious. Yes, I remember now. We'll entrust your recovery to St. Martin de Porres. I have a great devotion to him. And what does St. Martin de Porres have to do with my leg? St. Martin was a great doctor by the standards of his times, and he devoted his life to helping those in need, especially the sick and the monks in his monastery. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Well, it's just that the boy who'll race against me in the final is called Martin. Is he a mixed-race saint? Yes, he was. He's like me. In the history of the church, there have been saints of every race. You know, St. Martin was born in Lima, the capital of Peru, on December the 9th, 1579. Until the age of eight, he lived in poverty with his mother and his sister Juana, who was born two years after him. His father didn't live with him because he was in Ecuador. What a coincidence. Our friend Martin doesn't have a dad either, because he died. From an early age, it was clear he was intelligent and had a vocation for medicine. He began to learn about medicine in a pharmacy that was near his house. Lord, I want to learn how to heal the body just as you heal the soul. Good morning, Martin. Hello, how are you, ma'am? I don't feel well. You look very pale. What's the problem? Well, I'm not sleeping at night. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't sleep. Sleep is very important. Let's see what we can do for you. Here, these herbs will help you get to sleep. Are you sure? Yes, use them to make a tea and drink it before you go to bed. You'll sleep better, I guarantee it. Very well, I'll try it. Thank you, Martin. I hope it works. Martin, that was very well done. You gave her the right mixture of herbs. It's what you would have done, isn't it? Exactly. I see that you learn fast. Martin was a barber, too. In those days, barbers often worked as surgeons as well. So did Martin become a good doctor? He did. In those days, medicine was more primitive than today. Doctors did what they could, but their knowledge was limited. Medicinal plants were very important for healing people. Are you feeling better? I can't believe you fainted. What were you thinking? Hey, Sarah, come and listen to the story of St. Martin de Porres. It's really interesting. I can't. 
I have to make my bed and wash the breakfast dishes. What? Are you serious? Do I sound like I'm joking? When did you start doing housework? What's it got to do with you? I have my reasons. Mom, what's up with Sarah? Don't bother her. She's helping around the house and that's great. There we are. I've made the bed. Now for the next job. Sitting room swept. Mission accomplished. <laughs> And the dishes. And that's everything. Ready to lose tomorrow? What's your problem? You looking for a fight? Is that all you can say? Our fight will be on the running track. I'm going to finish way ahead of you. We'll see about that. I'm the fastest runner in the school. Carefully, you don't wear yourself out bragging about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, Sister Patricia. What are you doing? I'm classifying and sorting the books from the convent library. Wow. Isn't that a really boring job? Well, it's not the most exciting job in the world, but someone has to do it, don't they? I guess so. We should follow Jesus' example. He didn't come to be served, but to serve others. Sorting these books is a service to the community. You know, Sister Patricia, I help out at home, too. So do I. I note down everything I've done. Really? I don't do that. I'm very pleased. Helping out at home is very important. That's what St. Martin de Porres did. He served others. When he was 15 years old, he was received as a lay brother in the Dominican Friary of the Rosary in Lima, the capital of Peru. This was the lowest category of monk. He was responsible for cleaning the friary, and that's why he's often depicted carrying a broom. <laughs> They could have called him Friar Broom. Well, they could. And St. Martin probably would have thought it was very funny because he had a great sense of humor. You know, serving others is very important because Jesus himself said, whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Do you know what that means? When we're serving others, we're serving Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? At the monastery, they soon found out about Martin's knowledge of medicine and assigned him to work in the infirmary. Brother Martin, there are crowds of people waiting outside. You've become famous. I know, but I can't go any faster. I have to take time to see each patient. We should see Jesus himself in each of them. Very soon his fame began to spread and people came to see him from far and wide. Martin could do anything from bringing down a fever to setting broken bones. He was placed in charge of the infirmary and spent much of his time attending to the sick. He thought they were the people who needed him most. Welcome to the big final. Sergio and Martin will be competing for the gold medal. Ready to lose? You talking about yourself? Hmm. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> Yeah! It's not fair! And the winner goes to congratulate the loser! Just leave me alone. Okay, Sergio, whatever you say, you can stay there. Martin is our new champion. Those flowers are so pretty. Yes, I love taking care of the flowers in our garden. We'll pick some later to arrange for the next tubercle. You know, St. Martin knew all about medical herbs and how to grow them. And was he a lay brother all his life? Right. And did he spend his whole life sweeping up? <laughs> no, he didn't. You see, at that time, the friary was having serious financial problems. They didn't have any money? That's right. Father Pryor, I want you to sell me as a slave. But, Brother Martin, what are you talking about? Well, you see, I know that the friary needs money. And, as I am mixed race, I thought that you could possibly sell me as a slave and get a good price for me. What? He offered himself as a slave because he was mixed race? You see, 500 years ago, slavery still existed. But that's really, really bad. 
I know. Fortunately, thanks to God, it doesn't exist in the civilized world anymore. And do they sell him as a slave? No. Nothing doing, brother. I will not sell you as a slave, not for all the gold in the world. Please, think it over, Father Pryor. There's nothing to think about. Go on, return to your work, brother. May God bless you. Lord, I give you thanks for the saintliness of this young man. On June 2nd, 1603, after serving the order for nine years as a lay brother, Martin made his religious profession, taking the vows of poverty, obedience, and chastity. Wow. Hey, are you still mad? What do you think? You can't spend the rest of your life shut up in your bedroom. You'll have to go outside eventually. What, and meet Martin and his friends? Not a chance. I'd rather stay here. I know how you feel. Mom, we need to talk. Okay, honey, what is it? Let's see. This week, I made my bed every single day. I swept the sitting room. I washed the dishes after breakfast. I helped feed Nicholas three times, and I helped Alex with his math homework. Well, that's great, honey. I'm very proud of you. Is that all? Did you hear all the things I just said to you? Of course, Sarah. And I told you I thought it was great. You're a big help to me. But you're not listening to me. You're still washing dishes and you're not listening to me. Of course I'm listening. Okay, well, I deserve a reward, don't I? Oh, yes. I... I thought maybe you could buy me an MP3 player so I can listen to music. Okay, then. Really? Yes, you can have one for your birthday. That's not fair. It's ages till then. All my friends have MP3 players except me. Listen, Sarah. You're a big girl now, and you should be helping around the house anyway not to get a reward. So there's no reward? The reward is knowing you're helping others. That's not fair. We should serve others out of love like Jesus did and follow the examples of saints like Martin de Porres. It's not fair. <laughs> would you wash the dishes for nothing? What would you do if you wanted an MP3 player, hmm? Well, I don't know what else I can do. And you know the worst part? All the hard work I've done this week has been for nothing. You hear me? For nothing. Hello, Sister Patricia. Hi, Paula. Where's Sarah? She's mad because she did tons of housework last week, but her mom won't buy her an MP3 player. I understand. She helped around the house because she wanted a reward. Exactly. And it's not fair because she worked really hard. Look, Paula. In this life, we often have to do our duty without expecting a reward. In fact, doing things because you want something in return is a sign of immaturity. That's what little children do. But in that case, it's not fun. When we do good, we trust in God to give us our reward. We shouldn't expect the person we're helping to give us something in return. Do you understand? Yeah, I guess that's right. Ah, you lost. Why don't you just go away? Oh, yeah, sorry. Is my shiny gold medal too bright for you? <laughs> <laughs> if I hadn't fallen over, I'd have beaten you. I'm faster than you. Faster than me? Are you serious? So, where's your medal then, speedy boy? <laughs> you see, I told you. That's why I didn't want to leave the house. I won. You lost. Cheer up, Sergio. Cheer up? That's easy for you to say. You have to be a good loser. That's life. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. We all have to learn to lose with humility. St. Martin was very humble. He always tried to serve others doing the simplest jobs. And he became a great saint. You know something? You should congratulate Martin on winning the race. What? No way! I'm sure he won't be expecting it. Well, of course he won't expect it because I don't intend on doing it. He's laughed at me enough already. Sister Patricia, when did St. Martin find time to pray? Didn't he spend all his time caring for the sick? Well, you see, he would spend half the night praying in front of a large crucifix in the friary.
He also spent many hours before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and before an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And when did he sleep? He slept under a staircase for two or three hours only and ate very sparingly as acts of penance. Sometimes he would levitate as he prayed before a crucifix. Does levitate mean hover over the ground? That's right. He seemed to be floating in the air. Wow. Lord Viceroy, this is Brother Martin's cell. Very good. Let us go inside. Please, Your Excellency. I think we should wait until he has finished praying. Oh, I see. People went to ask him for advice. They even included bishops and theologians. Did he study theology? No. Everything he knew about God, he learned from prayer. And didn't God work any miracles through St. Martin? Yeah! Did God grant him any miracles? <laughs> well, look, God granted him the power of bilocation, which is the ability to be in two places at once. Wow! That's a real superpower. Oh, yeah! Can you imagine that? That would be awesome! I want superpowers like that. Me too! <laughs> the power of bilocation is only possible through the grace of God. It's extremely rare. Martin was a great saint and God granted it to him. Saint Martin was seen in Africa, in China, and in Japan, encouraging missionaries who found themselves in difficulties, and all without leaving his cell. That would be cool, traveling for free. He was also seen arriving at the homes of many sick people without leaving a cell. But how? Did he fly? No, he entered and left the friary without being seen and without opening the doors. The master of the novices couldn't believe it. Brother Martin, how? How do you do it? Well, brother, I have my ways of coming and going. But I lock the doors myself and only I have the key. It's impossible. St. Martin sounds like a really cool guy. Right. If I had powers like that, I'd put our Martin in his place. Would you? That's not what he did. St. Martin gave all the glory to God. Thank you, Brother Martin. You're a great doctor. And you're a saint. No, don't say that. I cure you, but God heals you. The important thing is what God is doing with your soul and grace. Martin also made many miraculous cures. When he could, he used the correct remedy but sometimes he had to make do with what he had. Once he had to care for a boy who had broken both his legs. Brother Martin, are you sure that these bandages will do the job? What else could we possibly do? But bandages won't be enough to heal a broken bone, Brother Martin. I know. I've dipped the bandages in warm wine, and now we must trust in God. There's nothing else we can do. And was he cured? Yes, he was. It was a miracle. He cured many people like that. People thought he was a great saint. Wow. Well, boys, I have to go now. I'll finish telling you the story of St. Martin later. You know what? I think Father Michael is right. Maybe I should go and congratulate Martin. Well, if you do, let me know, because I want to see his face. Sister Patricia, I'm really mad at my mom because she won't buy me an MP3 player. You know, Sarah, you should help out at home because serving others is a sign of maturity and our love of God. Well, it's not fair. Now, have you never thought about all the things your mom does for you? She carried you in her womb for nine months. She went through the pain of childbirth. She fed you. She carried you when you were sick. She dressed you. She changed your diapers. She woke you up at night when you were crying. Yeah, I guess. You guess? And she did all that out of love without asking for anything in return. Oh. You know, that's true. I never thought of that. And she still does it all out of love. You're right. Our lives should be full of continual service to others, starting with those who are closest to us. You know, St. Martin founded the Orphanage of the Holy Cross to help the neediest children in the city. He took in beggars, giving them food, cured their illnesses, and found work for them. All this without expecting anything in return. 
Wow, I feel really bad now. I think I'm going to talk to my mom. Mom? What is it, Sarah? I have something really important to tell you. Yes, I'm all ears. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you? What for? For everything you've done for me since I was born. But Sarah, you don't have to thank me for that. I know, but I think that all of us in this house need to thank you sometimes for everything you do for us. I do it with all my love because I want you to be happy. Hi there, Martin. Hey, look who it is. Mr. Second Place. You mean the one who lost? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. I get the message. I've just come to congratulate you on winning the race. What? I mean it. Congratulations. Are you trying to be funny? Hey, do you think it's easy for me to say this? Do you really mean that? Yeah, I do. What's fair is fair. I don't know what to say. Thanks, Sergio. You proved you're a good sport. Father Michael, tell us how St. Martin died. Well, look, when Martin was 60 years old, he became very sick and realized that he was going to die. The Viceroy of Peru, Luis Jerónimo Fernández de Cabrera y Bobadilla, Count of Chinchón, went to kiss his hand. Your Excellency. Brother Martin, watch over me from heaven. As the creed was said, when he heard the words, et homo factus est, which mean, and he was made man. He kissed the crucifix and died peacefully. And everybody thought he was a saint, didn't they? Yes. He died on the 3rd of November, 1639, and everyone in the city of Lima went to his funeral. He was declared a saint on the 6th of May, 1962, by Pope John XXIII. Was he made a saint because he dedicated his life to serving others? That's right. We should all follow St. Martin's example and try to become saints like him. I'm not sure. I don't know if this saint stuff is for me. <laughs> you mustn't think that being a saint is anything strange. For children like you, the path you take to sainthood is to be good Catholics. And that means being good to others, helping out at home, studying, and being good friends. If you do that, God will be very happy with you. Lord, I ask you to help me serve others just like St. Martin de Porres did, starting with my family and without expecting anything in return. Lord, you led St. Martin de Porres by a life of humility to eternal glory. May we follow his example and be exalted with him in the kingdom of heaven. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>